regreso aquí en Auto 060 y eh, vamos a cambiar inmediatamente inglés. We're switching back to English immediately to talk to Christine Bracco for Car MD to talk about the annual report of the health of the vehicles here in the U.S. How are you, Christine? I'm good. Thank you for having me. No, thank you very much. And uh, we talked uh, about a year ago, obviously, when you, you launched your last edition of this uh, very interesting study. And uh, basically, the, the, the short title is like, where's the most expensive mechanic in the U.S., right? Well, it's not necessarily the most expensive mechanic, but it's who paid the most and who didn't get their cars uh, fixed when they should have. So uh, it all plays a part in what you end up paying in the long run. I know, I know. It's all about money. At the, bo the bottom line is money. So, uh, money, well, money. Yeah, exactly. So tell us, uh, where is that? Where, where are people paying more for their to, to cars to be in a service? Well, every year CarMD tracks this. We've been doing it for three years in a row, and usually it's the West Coast, but this year a lot of the states on the East Coast, along the East Coast, paid more in car repair. And it was actually New Jersey who got hit the hardest, which, you know, is, is sad when they're already uh, been hit so hard by the hurricane-related flood damage and whatnot. It's, uh, it's been a tough year for New Jersey. Yeah, but that was uh, one of the reasons, right? Because, I mean, that in, in, impacted every aspect of uh, the economy over there. It has, and that definitely plays a part. Um, also, uh, there's so many people that ignore that check engine light. You know, you put black tape over on it, and you close your eyes, and you hope that nothing goes wrong, and you can keep driving. And we believe that when people had to bring their cars in for the flood damage, a lot of problems that they've been ignoring had been put off. So oh, if I that see. check engine light is on, the best way to save money in the long run is to get it fixed as soon as possible. Yeah, and um, one is, uh, I remember from last year that the number one reason for that was the oxy oxygen sensor, right? Like, that remains the same? That remains the same, and I believe when we spoke, and I want to reiterate this, when the oxygen sensor is on, it seems like the car is driving fine, but it's actually sucking down a lot of extra fuel. So in order to save money at the pump and, and save money on gas, you really need to get the small things fixed, like the oxygen sensor. Yeah, and uh, that's something that comes up, obviously, with a uh, check engine light, but... Uh, I mean, the, the, the key thing for people, for everybody to keep their car running in, in, in good shape is like just like regular maintenance and maybe the technicians can, can uh, detect that earlier enough so they can uh, fix it before it goes on. It is. As long as you're getting your car looked at on a regular basis and taking good care of it, you know, you really should keep your repair costs to a minimum. And then, like, Car MD and, I, and we sell a, a handheld tool where you can actually diagnose problems and sometimes catch them early before the check engine light even goes on. So, like, I know I use mine before I'm heading out for a long summer road trip mm -hmm. to try to head off anything, you know, before it, before it happens in the middle of my vacation. Yeah. So, can you... Uh... Uh, share with us uh, where were the top five states where people pay more for to repair their cars? Yes, over the past year, New Jersey was number one. They paid $392.99 on average every time that check engine light, light came on. Wow. Um, believe it or not, D.C., the District of Columbia, came in second. Um, uh, California, where CarMD is located, came in third. And then North Carolina and Maryland. Um, those were the five places that were most expensive to get your car repaired last year. And uh, the prices went up uh, significantly, no, from last year? Yeah, we're seeing about a 10% increase in average repair costs. Um, most of that is due to an increase in labor costs. Um, sometimes it's because technicians are charging a little bit more, but a lot of times it's because um, cars here are very high-tech these days. Yeah. When you're getting hybrid work done and very expensive parts replaced on older cars, it's going to take a little bit longer. So sometimes the labor costs go up because it takes them more hours to repair the car. Yeah, so in that sense, uh, is uh the recommendation from CarMD to take the cars to the dealership instead of an independent mechanic since they are like more complicated and like they have the right equipment to service them? You know what, we don't necessarily recommend anything other than going to an ASE certified technician sh or shop. Um, you see the blue seal and that usually means like very high quality, very skilled technicians. But as long as you're comfortable with your mechanic and you're communicating with them, that's the very best thing. Um, it's also sometimes better to go back to the dealership if you know that you have what's called a recall or a technical service bulletin. Yeah. If there's a known issue on your car and you go back to the dealership, you can usually get the repair done quicker and at lower cost. Yeah, um, and there were uh, some good news, no, in the report from this year? 
Yes, the best news is every year we keep seeing hybrid repair costs going down. Um, so that's good. As more people buy and drive and need uh, hybrids repaired, there's more parts and people who are skilled to deal with them. And so it's very nice to see that. Um, that's healthy for the environment and for our pocketbooks. Yeah, and uh, the main uh, good news on that is the replacement of the battery cost went down significantly, right? Yes, hybrid battery costs continue to go down, which is very nice. Um, unfortunately, in Arizona, it's still quite expensive. Yeah. Um, we maybe need to get more more hybrids on the road in Arizona, but uh, but yes, it's definitely trending down. And that huge difference in the price is due to the, I mean, because the cars are the same, in, in like maybe New York and Arizona, but just like the, 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 the fact that there's less uh, availability of uh, mechanics and parts, or uh, oh, that's the, the right? Absolutely, that, that definitely play the role of that and the type of hybrid. I uh, mean, you know, some of some of them, the, the parts just simply cost more, but but it all plays a part. And these are all things that people just need to be aware of when they're making buying and um, repair decisions. Um, if you just like the average age of a car is now over 11 years old, that's fine. You've paid it, it's paid off, and you're driving it, and it's great. You just need to be aware and budget for the fact that parts are going to start to fail. Um, catalytic converter transmissions, more expensive parts, um, and as long as you budget for that, uh, you know, you can keep a car driving for many, many, many yeah. years now. Absolutely. And uh, any news uh, on the electric cars, or is too soon to have data on that? Uh, we do not have data on that yet, but I'm sure it'll start creeping into our um, repair data in the next few years. Yeah. We're talking to Christine Brockoff, uh, Brockoff from uh, CarMD, uh, talking about the health uh, report, uh, the vehicle health report from 2012, right? These are the numbers from last year. These are the numbers that we, we track them for the for the past year, yes. Yeah, and Christine, can you please share uh, where can, uh, our audience can look for more information about this study and other things that CarMD do? Yes, you can go to carmd.com, C-A-R-M as in Mary, D as in doctor, dot com. And we also have a great free service at carmd.com forward slash scorecard, where you can see the most common problems and repair costs for your own car by year, make, and model. Oh, that's very, very useful. So hopefully people pay attention to that. And as you said, like one thing is like to see the light on, and then like the other thing is to take action, right? And, and taking action is just so important to save money. A, a great example is last year, Wyoming was the most expensive state for repairs. Um, and we feel like we've done a very good job of educating folks in Wyoming. They're getting small things looked at, and they dropped substantially this year. So it's just all about education and making good decisions. Well, hopefully we're uh, doing a little part here on uh, sharing that uh, great news, that, uh, that great, great service that you, you provide in your, in your study. So thank you very much, Christine, and uh, have a great Great summer, and uh, uh, hopefully we won't, you won't see a check engine car <laughs> light on your car. Uh, I actually got one this morning that I'm going to go deal with. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I'm going to get it done quickly. Don't waste any time on that. Thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you. Ahí estaba Kristen Grafo de, de Car MD. Eh, hablando sobre la importancia de poner atención cuando se prende esa lucecita del check engine en el dashboard, en el panel de control de instrumentos de los autos, porque una falla que puede ser simple al principio se puede convertir muy rápido en algo que no solamente va a ser mucho más grave, sino mucho más costoso al final. Así que bueno, esto ha sido el show de hoy. Muchas gracias por la audiencia. Los esperamos en la próxima edición de Auto 060. Gracias a DJ Cafa y en los controles y toda la información, como siempre, de la cual hemos hablado en este show, el libro sobre la sobre la vida de Henry Ford también ese intento por romper el récord Guinness en el Volkswagen Passat con tecnología diesel TDI eh, la responsabilidad y el control de los eh, adolescentes al volante y esta información sobre el reporte anual de la salud de los autos eh, carmd.com también está todo esto en nuestra página de facebook.com slash auto 060 pues los esperamos la próxima edición de Auto 060 aquí en Cristina Radio Network yo soy Javier Moto Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.